Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Smirk and Laughter Games. It's one of four players and it's called Koi. Koi is a game that takes about 30 minutes to play and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game Koi, you're going to be playing as little koi fish in a pond. And what do koi like to do in a pond? Well, they like to eat. Eating is very essential for koi, so they're going to be trying to eat these different little dragonflies as well as occasionally they'll eat these little frogs. Now you are trying to eat more than your opponents, and as you eat you're going to be gaining points throughout the game. It's going to uh, insinuate around different rounds, and during different rounds these weather cards are going to get flipped over, and certain things are going to happen, whether it's placing a frog in all empty corners of the board facing the center before your turn, move one frog three spaces, jumping any rocks and other frogs. They have other things that can happen as well. Frogs actually do certain things like eating dragonflies and messing over your opponents. You'll have things that will splash in the pond like little lilies that will move the board around and your core you're going to try and move along as well based on movement cards that you'll have in your hand. These movement cards are going to allow you to move up, down, left, and right, turning your core in different directions as well as potentially jumping over certain things. If you can gain the most points by the time the entire game is over, you will win the game. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Koi. So here's everything you're going to get in the game Koi, along with, of course, the box and the rule book here, which is going to give you all the explanation you'll need to play the game. This is the board setup. We'll have it for two players here, actually, but I've included all four colors so you can see them. In the game, you're going to select one of these colors for each player and then move one of the Koi to the scoring track and the rest uh, will be to the player area. We'll do a two-player game, so we'll just go ahead and take off the red and the orange and leave these guys here at one, and these guys will go to the uh, their respective players. Then then we're going to go ahead and set up the weather deck. So we're going to draw cards from here after we shuffle it and place it down here. There's six different rounds in the game. And these weather cards will change the variant of the game as you play for each round. This is the Koi deck here. You're going to give everybody cards. And depending on the number of players, will be how many cards you give. In a two-player game, they're each going to get four cards. You'll see that there's these lily pads here. They're going to go onto the board based on the number of players, along with these little petals here. And, of course, there are going to be rocks that will block the path of the Koi. There's going to be frogs that will eat the mosquitoes and be placed on the board to mess with them, as well as new mosquitoes spawning every round to increase the point total of the game so you can gain points by eating them. Two main ways to gain points in this game is to eat mosquitoes and of course to eat frogs, and you're going to try and gain as many points as you can per round. So that is the basic idea. To start off, everybody's going to move their koi off of the board, and then uh, they're going to go ahead and reveal a, uh, then you go ahead and place your koi anywhere you want on your side. So we'll have one player start over here, and of course direction facing matters. So for in this instance, we're going to go ahead and start this guy over here and on the next player's turn he'll get to start his over on this side of the board but he'll set it here for now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and flip the first weather card and read it to every player. This one says place a frog in any uh, all, in all empty corners of the board. So all these frogs are going to go to the corners of the board just like that. And then it says uh, facing the center so they actually do face the center and that's because when they move it does actually matter because they're trying to eat their mosquitoes to mess with their opponents. And before your turn you can move one frog straight three spaces jumping any rocks and other frogs. To start the player's turn off he's simply going to go ahead and move his his guy three spaces like I said and or sort of move uh, one of the frogs three spaces. So for instance uh, he knows that his opponent's going to place on this side so he'll actually move one and two and eat this and, and and this is gonna get rid of this guy here and you can jump any of these guys here so I think it would actually jump over here I'm not sure if not it would just stay here because this would be the third space so I don't know exactly if it moves or not but I think I think it does actually jump so it will eat this mosquito here um, after that then uh, it's going to be the first player's turn he'll have his handy dandy hand of cards we'll have the other player go over here and have his cards and as you can see they're going to be movements uh, and you're going to start from one from I believe it's the bottom where it shows your koi all the way up to the top yes and you're going to go ahead and utilize these cards here and you can play as many of them as you'd like you can also choose to discard as many as you want to draw up to the number minus one so if you want to discard these three you would be able to draw two and you could also choose to pass and it's pretty simple how it works so you're gonna go ahead and play that one first he would actually move one two three and then he's going to turn clockwise once he would eat this and that would count towards his score and if he wanted to he can continue to try and play maybe he wants to do oh I don't know he could choose to do this if he wanted but um, you have to follow the black ones the blue ones however you have the choice so for for this one for this instance here if he played this one he would have to move forward one and then he could choose to go clockwise which he would and then he, he would have to move forward another which would actually eat this frog giving him more points and then he could choose to turn if he wanted to now in this case he doesn't want to turn into that rock because he's not going to be able to uh, get through it unless he can jump and there are cards that will let you jump such as the splash card that will actually let you jump uh, if there is 
is a card that you want to play. So for instance, if he actually did do this because he wanted to go this way, he could play this one. But whenever you bump into something or the edge of the board, it'll negate that action. So for this one here, to go forward, he would just bump. And then for the jump, he would actually jump over that uh, uh, rock here from lily pad to lily pad. But likely he's not going to want to do that just yet. So he'll go ahead and just leave it just like that, getting rid of these cards here. And remember, you're also going to be uh, drawing three cards at the beginning of every turn, uh, I believe, except for the first turn. After he is done with that, you're going to go ahead and um, move on to the next player, I believe. Uh, no, sorry, you're going to go ahead and check for a flood. That's important. Checking for a flood is going to determine... Um, if, if there's no dragonflies on the board, then a flood is going to occur, and certain things happen during a flood. Uh, first of all, dragonflies will spawn on all the different lily pads uh, that uh, are empty. So in this case, a dragonfly would not spawn here because there's already a koi there. And um, you'd also remove any cherry blossoms and frogs on the board, placing them back into the supply. So all of these guys would actually disappear, so they'd all go away. Um, and uh, then it would push all the koi back to the outer edges of the board based on the closest um, location they are to. In this case, he can actually go to any side of the board due to the fact that uh, the koi is in the middle. But if he was right here, he'd have to go to this side. And if he was right here, he'd have to go to this side. But So for instance, he'll actually just go back and he would be able to choose the orientation of the koi. So we'll go ahead and put him just like that. And then, like, the last thing you're going to want to do is spawn the, the dragonfly. So in this case, this one would actually be put up here. So remember, removing cherry blossoms and frogs, uh, push all the koi to the outer side of the board, uh, and then go ahead and add the dragonflies. And then it's the next player's turn. The next player is going to get to take all the same actions, choosing his, his guy to go in one, in one space. Maybe choose that one right there. And then he's going to be able to play things. There are other cards in the game, like this one here and this one here. This one is actually going to uh, be a pedal. It will actually drop on the board and it will push things out of the way. This is a lily pad that can be spawned on the board. And these things will be generating these additional mosquitoes as the game goes on. So those are options you can use throughout the game. And uh, then, of course, he has his movements. So if he wanted to, he could do this one here. Uh, but it would not get him where he needs to go. Then here's another one here. Moving forward, choosing not to turn, moving forward once again for eating the mosquito here. And then he could choose to turn or not, and in this case he probably will. And you can save on save onto the cards if you want. You can keep these cards in your hand. Uh, and you can only have a max of five cards, otherwise you have to discard down. Uh, after that is done, that is going to signify the end of the round. After all players have taken their turn, another one of these goes will pop up, and you're going to do what it says and continue to play the game. You'll also score these ones here, and you're going to score based on what you get. So this is two and one, which will be three points for uh, for uh, white here. So one, two, uh, and three. So you'd be probably starting on zero, I guess. Uh, and then this guy here, he scored two points for getting this dragonfly. So uh, one and two. Putting these back into the supply and continuing. Of course, the game's going to grow based on the number of players, but the idea remains the same. You can place these little guys here if you have the cards in the deck. Uh, that you, If you've played them from the deck, this is a rock card that's going to basically block the movement. Uh, these little frogs here, you'll be able to move them at certain times when you play them. And also spawn them will uh, be basically let you eat different dragonflies and the weather cards affect that as well and then these mis these little uh, dragonflies will spawn on the board when there are none left as well as during a flood and that's the main idea of the game there's a first player token here and then these things actually have uh, affect the wind and the wind is based on some of these weather cards that may be implemented in the game whoever gets the farthest along on the scoring pat track that goes from 20 all the way to 40 over here at the end of the last round is going to be the winner of the game Koi. Uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go up and talk about it. Okay, so before we get into the review of Koi, let's talk about a couple caveats. And luckily I have the rule book here to show you that there's a little chart here insinuating for each token what they do and how they work. Frogs will bump it will jump the rocks uh, if it bumps into a rock. If it bumps into the koi, it'll get eaten. If it bumps into the lily pad, it'll land on it. If it bumps on the cherry blossom, it'll land on, uh, on blossom that occupies the same hex. And then if it bumps into a dragonfly, it'll eat a dragonfly. And it does all these for all the different ones. Uh, one of the things, like I was mentioning before, is this little lily here. When it drops on the board, everything around it is going to be pushed backwards one space. And that changes the game as far as where players are going to want to go. So if you know a player has certain cards that will make them get, get certain places, or you want to put, put things more difficult, then you're going to want to, of course, use the lily or maybe you can even use the lily to get uh, the dragonflies closer to you so you can eat them easier or even bumping them into you which will allow you to eat them uh, the rocks you're going to play placing two of the rocks per rock card that you place down and these rocks block the path of the koi 
uh, and make it a little more difficult to get around. You can't place two rocks on the same haze, uh, hex adjacent to each other, so they have to be at least one space apart. And uh, those are the main things, as well as the last thing that I keep calling these guys mosquitoes. And they're, they're dragonflies. I don't know why I keep calling them mosquitoes, but I guess frogs, uh, koi will eat mosquitoes or dragonfly. Dragonfly are probably a little more tasty, though. Uh, but that's that's the main stuff. The last thing is the weather deck has a lot of stuff. I'll explain a couple of them. Uh, natural beauty cards, placing frogs, cherry blossoms, or lily pads, place two tokens instead of one today. Snow. Today you may only play up to three koi cards. If you play less than three, draw a card for each you choose to not play and at the end of your turn. Uh, windy. Select a wind token. Owl dragonflies move that number of spaces in that direction, then move cherry blossoms as well, activating them as they land. And cherry blossoms can actually cause a, a kind of chain reaction of events where if one drops and it moves the other ones and those ones will actually activate and move once again so that can be of some interesting uh different changes and of course the winds there's a one and a two um but otherwise that's that's it so so what do i think well first of all the good the good of the game is a the artwork the artwork on this game is brilliant it's wonderful it makes me feel very relaxed and zen like when i'm looking at this i really really enjoyed that when i first saw the box i knew i was going to dig the artwork and as it came out and i saw the presence the tabletop presence of the game i was fully down with it i love all the different little tokens the little meeples they all look brilliant and it, it really expands the life of the pond as you are progressively continuing throughout the game you're going to be using cards in your hand and of course you have options to either continue to play or uh, and as well as drawing the cards and you're going to want to make certain choices keeping them and getting rid of them that is a nice touch to it the components and the quality of the game is high high well done it looks great it has some uh, additional inserts in the box to make everything easy to put away the game is rather quick to teach rather easy to learn and it's always going to be different with the different weather cards so those are the main good stuff about the game as well as of course everything's really easy to see and understand um something that drove me nuts is i feel like i didn't ever have enough that i wanted to do on my turn and the analysis paralysis factor can go really heavy in this game just on one or two different little things affecting you in play the rocks can really mess you over and uh, I just kind of wanted to have more cards in hand. As the game progressed and I got rid of more and more cards, I ended up with less cards in hand and less things to do and I had to wait to draw in order to get more things. Sometimes the weather cards are actually nice and give more players more cards. And that's when I like the game. I think it was when it shines the best. Uh, it has a one player variant, which I haven't played, but I don't think I'd play for this type of game regardless of how it is played, just due to the fact of how it is played in the multiplayer variants. Uh, and I want to play with, if I'm gonna play this game, I want three or four players. The two player I played a couple times was fine. Uh, the three and the four were much better because it brought life to the pond, but the analysis paralysis factor came in quite a bit. Uh, you can really mess with players that, and that can really bum people out when you're placing rocks next to them to the point where they can't get where they want to be. And they're always going to want more and more. So I, it's, it's not a bad game. But at the same time, there's certain aspects with this one that didn't make me feel zen-like when I was playing it. I was too busy trying to figure out what I needed to play, when I needed to play it, hoping players wouldn't play certain things against me. And when it happened, it was so detrimental and it was just like frustrating, you know? Uh, so for the type of game I was expecting, it was not the type of game I ended up playing, which I think is kind of what gave me a bummer for this one. Um, my wife really enjoyed this one. She loved the look of it, and it reminded her of the, the koi ponds and whatnot. I, it did have some nostalgia for me because I actually had a koi pond in my backyard, so that was nice. My cameraman also had the same problem with not having the things that they needed uh, you know, in order, not having the things he needed in order to play where he wanted to go most of the time. And that just can happen in these kind of games. It feels like you're, you're getting just a lot of randomness in this deck especially when you're drawing the cards and you end up just getting a bunch of these frog and the, and the lily and the 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 uh, flower and the rocks, then you're not gonna be able to move your, your koi around and then you're not gonna be able to eat and you're not gonna be able to get points. And that just kind of can happen in this game. Overall, it's a game that I think has an audience and I think there's certain people that are going to enjoy it. For me, I just it just didn't hit that right spot for the type of game I thought it was going to be and I thought that was my main problem. Overall, it's a beautiful game though. And if you like tactical movement-based games with some random fixed, uh, random, um, I guess you call it like mechanical moving it reminds me of uh 
Oh, that, that robot game. I can't remember what it's called now. Where you're placing them down and flipping them face up. Uh, it has that sort of feel to it, but not really. It's kind of somewhere in the between that. Um, so if you're interested in taking a look at Koi, go ahead and check out the description below. Overall, it's an interesting little game. It just didn't fit my, my appetite for what I was expecting, though.